Hi guys! It's been a few years since I announced that I would be leaving this channel and making original content on a different one. If you follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, or my Facebook page, then you probably already know that I ended up going on hiatus for a while and just returned to making videos again recently. I received a lot of comments talking about my old Maple videos, which made me nostalgic, and I recalled that I actually wanted to make some videos on my thoughts while making those Maple series. Just to make things clear, I won't be returning to my Maple series or this channel. I'm posting this here instead of my new channel because it should be more interesting to my old subscribers on this channel. Anyway, I'll be starting with Demonic Wings and Scarlet Chains first. This one's for you, Brianna, as well as anybody else who's also interested. Demonic Wings was my second published series, but my first one made with Sony Vegas. It was mostly a slideshow since I didn't get into actual animating until later. So back then, there were these cute, bright pixel backgrounds that were trending in Maple series, especially the ones in modern settings. I usually prefer fantasy settings, but I really wanted to use these backgrounds, so I came up with an urban fantasy setting for demonic waves. It might be a little obvious that I was inspired by popular vampire romance novels for teens, aka Twilight. My way of being different was just to make my characters demons instead of vampires, even though they still retained a lot of behavior similar to vampires in popular fiction. I also reused several ideas from games, anime, or manga, and wow, I was not very original back then. So I already mentioned Twilight, which probably had the biggest influence over this series. The whole dynamic between Rhea and the demon boys, where they had to resist the urge to eat her, was clearly inspired by the vampires in Twilight trying to abstain from human blood. The idea of demons moving super fast also came from Twilight, although they actually just teleport. In addition to that, Rhea's ability to perceive human emotions was inspired by Jasper's powers. But the difference between them is that Rhea could not manipulate the emotions of others. He could only sense them, and potentially be affected by them, much to his detriment. I was also a fan of a lot of shoujo manga and anime, and to be honest, I still kinda am. The idea of Psyche turning into a rabbit when kissed came from Fruit's Basket, and the idea of Rhea being able to see supernatural elements without her glasses seems like it came from Zombie Lone, but it actually didn't. I got the idea from a TV show or a movie that I watched, but I can't remember the name of it. A character named Guy from Tales of the Abyss also inspired one part of the series, which is Psyche's fear of woman. Guy fears woman due to trauma just like Psyche, although their past experiences are a little different. Rhea is snappy towards those she is unfamiliar with, but is actually quite mellow with her loved ones. Her name came from a character in the mythical detective Loki, although she doesn't have anything else in common with the character. I think I didn't develop Rhea's character very well in the first season. I feel like I failed to show a lot of her thoughts, which would have given her more depth. But I do think her personality was better established in the second season. Rikuto, or just Riku, was meant to be upbeat and easygoing, although I feel like I didn't show that very well either. I didn't develop his character enough, which probably ended up being one of the reasons why Rhea didn't end up with him. Although I planned for his death since the beginning, I intended to have Rhea pine for him even after he was gone. Things turned out differently, but well, I'll discuss more about that later. Psyche was meant to be mysterious and distant, but also charming and a little flirty at times. Out of all the characters in the first season, I think he was probably the most well-developed one. Probably because I actually had a concrete idea of his personality and past. At the end of the series, I asked viewers who their favorite character was and wow, Psyche won by a landslide. You've got a lot of fangirls, huh? I understand, I'm one of them too. Truthfully, that's another one of the reasons why Rhea ended up with Psyche. I liked him too much and wanted him to be happy. My 
Maya was introduced just to be that one annoying girl who wedges into a developing relationship between the protagonists and causes drama. That's why she was engaged to Rikuto, who was originally planned to be with Rea. So, I actually hate characters like these, and that's why Maya never went that far and backed down gracefully after she saw that Rikuto was serious about Rea. I'm not sure why I added her at all, considering my dislike for those types of characters. Maybe it's just because that trope was very popular in romance stories, so I thought mine would be incomplete without it. Ray was named after a friend I met on Maple Story, but they have nothing else in common. Ray is a bit of a tsundere. He's smart, but bratty with a sharp tongue. He's a character you either love or hate, and I happen to have a soft spot for this kind of character, which is why he got a whole extra story. And due to that extra story, I think Ray probably ended up with more character development than Syke did. Sadly, Ray was not very popular, but this poll was taken before the extra, and people's opinions might have changed after. Ray really loved his sister, Maya, and I know, I know, I'm not a fan of incest either, which is why he ended up with Jasmine, but I think I never elaborated enough on the reason for his obsession with Maya. Ray was excellent in almost all he did. He was very intelligent and absolutely flawless with all sorts of magic. And that's why he was at the top in demon school. Many others only saw that side of him and only valued his achievements, especially his parents. Maya was the only one who saw Ray as a whole and didn't care about his excellence. She treasured him either way. On top of that, due to their parents' neglect and dislike for Maya, she was not raised together with Rei. This made their relationship of siblings less significant in Rei's mind, which allowed his feelings for Maya to grow into something deeper. Jasmine was created just to be Rei's love interest. She never made any appearances in the story until the extra. The idea of her name came from a song of the same name that I was listening to while writing the extra story. And no, I won't play the song here, you'll have to look it up yourself. I've been traumatized by all the copyright strikes from the MMBs I've made. I put a lot of thought into what kind of girl Ray would be attracted to and ended up with several different ideas for Jasmine. I thought about making her a demon since Ray wasn't as interested in humans as Rikuto was. Ray never developed any affection for Rea, unlike Rikuto and Psyche. He was too busy simping for Maya. I considered making Jasmine a half-demon, but they were supposed to be very rare. I thought I already put too many silver-haired demons in the story, which were also supposed to be rare, so in the end, I decided to just make her a plain human. Despite Ray's haughty attitude at times, he's actually quite empathetic due to his demon ability, which is probably why he acts so arrogant sometimes to keep people away and preserve his own emotions. Although Maya is far more outspoken than Jasmine, they were both victims of abuse which Ray found difficult to ignore. And as he became more involved with Jasmine, they ended up falling for each other. Asu appeared in the second season and basically only had one role, which was to help push Psyche over the edge. I made him young on purpose so Rhea viewed him as nothing more than a child, but Psyche would still be vexed by him. To Psyche, who was over a century older than Rhea, the few years that Asu had until adulthood would pass in the blink of an eye, and those few years were also far less than the age difference between him and Rhea. Sykes' jealousy wasn't actually that strong, since he did know that Rhea only viewed Asu as a child, but under the dire situation with Des, it ended up affecting him much more than it would have normally. Oria was the main antagonist of Demonic Wings, and... Oh man, what in the world was I thinking when I came up with his name? Was I looking at Oreo cookies or a bottle of shampoo? Why do I give my villains such silly names? Anyway, besides his name, I kind of wish I developed his character better. He was a villain just for the sake of being a villain, and I feel that the motivation behind a lot of the things he did or said were actually rather vague. To give you an idea of how little presence he had in my head, I forgot his scar multiple times in Scarlet Chains, despite it being a significant part of his backstory. And in the opening for Scarlet Chains, he's wearing the wrong hat! 
and I literally never noticed until today, 14 years later. This was the main villain of Scarlet Chains, and uh, I wish I spent more time developing my villains. There wasn't much more to him other than he was just a very unhinged man who enjoyed chaos. I mentioned that he was Rikuto's cousin, and he had also killed Rikuto's parents, but never elaborated any more than that. I don't remember the details I had planned for that incident anymore, if there were even any. The reasoning behind it might have just been the same, that he was a deranged man who reveled in others' suffering, and that's why he was supposed to be in prison forever. So when I came up with the story of demonic wings, I had the beginning and the ending planned, but nothing in between. Everything that happened in the middle was written as it came to my head. Believe it or not, that's actually how I developed all of my Maple series, which is probably why they ended up having some inconsistencies or abrupt endings. At the beginning, we see that Rhea is already a demon, and she's merely recalling the past events that led up to it. I actually kind of regretted this early reveal. Near the end of the story, I wasn't sure if I wanted her to turn into a demon anymore, but I had no choice. So the real story begins with Rikuto, a demon who has come to the human world to kill a thousand humans to gain a right for his full demon wings. This actually sounds pretty ridiculous to me now, but let's just go along with it. He bumps into Rhea who loses her glasses, who then sees that he has wings, which are normally invisible to the human eye. For some reason, his response is to kidnap her and bring her to his home, where he then tricks her into becoming their servant. Probably just so he can keep her under control and prevent her from causing any trouble regarding his true identity. Despite the fact that Rhea was supposed to be a slave for the demon boys, she never actually did much for them other than clean Sykes bloody laundry and buy a book for Rikuto. For the most part, it seemed like she was just living there as a normal guest. And Rhea adapted to this whole situation strangely quick despite all of her early disagreements with Rikuto. Anyway, shortly after Rhea was confined to her home, Rikuto decides to go visit her mom and tell her about Rhea's new living arrangements. And for some reason, he had the genius idea of bringing Psyche, who hadn't eaten in a while, and therefore obviously ended up attacking Rhea's mom. What was Rikuto thinking? What was I thinking? It's such a forced plot development. The worst part of it all is Rhea was very calm about the incident. Way, way too calm. Her mother got injured so badly that she ended up in the hospital, Yet Rhea forgave both Rikuto and Psyche so easily just because her mother was still alive. What even came out of this incident? Nothing. Nothing came out of this ridiculous incident. Everyone and everything continued on afterwards like it never happened. The only purpose of this saying was to show how dangerous the demons could be, but Rhea barely reacted to it. Shortly after that scene, which I'm going to pretend never happened like the rest of the cast, Maya and Rei crash the home and bring new drama to the story. Rei, as a servant to Oreo, reports to him that Rikuto and Saik have befriended a human girl. Oreo becomes intrigued when he hears of her ability to see their wings, but decides to leave them be for now. Sometime later, we see confirmation that Rikuto and Saik have developed romantic feelings for Rei. They decide to pull some strings to enroll in her school, where they find out from Rhea's friend that she has a fear of romantic relationships and thinks that men will only break women's hearts. After learning about this, Rikuto makes his move and promises Rhea that he will always be there for her and kisses her. If you think this scene was forced, you're right, I totally forced it in. That's why it came out of the blue, but I'll discuss more about that later. The kiss leaves a number of characters feeling upset. Rhea doesn't know how to feel about it, Psyche feels conflicted, Maya is saddened but backs down, and Rei is nauseated by Rikuto's feelings for Rhea. Rei goes to the demon realm and Oriel orders him to turn Rhea into a demon before next sunrise, or else he'll let Maya die. We then learn that Maya has died before, but was revived by Oriel's special power in exchange for Rei's service. 
After Ray returns to the human realm, he wastes nearly all of his time and fails to accomplish his mission, and Oreo ends up coming himself. That's right, it's another forced plot development. While Rikuto confronts Oreo, Psych returns to the demon world to gain his full demon wings and along with it, enough power to defeat Oreo. Although Psyche is confronted by his mother, who is the source of his trauma, he manages to conquer his fears and returns in time to take Rikuto's place in fighting Oreo. Rikuto then runs off to find Rei, who had snuck off with Rea. Man, I was so clever about avoiding any actual fight scenes since I didn't know how to animate back then. On the other side of the house, Rei practically begs Rea to drink the demon blood and become a demon. Rikuto arrives before Rei could convince Rea, and the two end up in a battle. While all of this is happening, Psych defeats Oreo, who tells him with his dying breath that he had fallen in love with a human before and actually wants Rea to turn into a demon for their sake rather than his. When Psych finds the others, he discovers that the creature Rei had summoned to fight Rikuto went against his orders and attacked Rea instead. Rikuto then sacrificed himself to defend Rea, and with his dying breath, he asked Rea to drink his blood and become a demon so Psyche wouldn't have to be alone. To be honest, I feel like this wasn't a good enough reason for Rea to make such a life-changing decision, but I'll talk more about this in a bit. At the end, we see that Psyche has taken over as the new demon lord, and that he and Rea are now in a committed relationship. Maya got married, while Rei was simply the same as ever. Despite supposedly being a romance series, I can't help but feel that the romance in Demonic Wings was actually not very well developed. A lot of the romantic drama was forced. Maya kinda came out of nowhere, just like that kiss Rikuto suddenly gave Rea. That kiss happened literally just for the sake of happening. I realized that there had been nearly no romantic development at all, and I wanted to seal the deal between Rikuto and Rea. But it still didn't happen. The biggest issue was probably the fact that Rea had never shown any romantic interest in Rikuto nor Psyche. This makes sense though, considering her trauma and view on relationships. With this situation, the romance would have to be a slow burn and develop steadily, but the rest of the plot didn't allow for such leisure. So when the time came for Rhea to become a demon, it felt like she didn't actually have enough motivation to do as Rikuto said. Did she love Rikuto enough to want to fulfill his wishes? Or did she love Psyche enough to want to make such a life-changing decision to be with him forever? Honestly, the answer seems like it should be neither. Even in the last episode, where Psyche showers Rhea with affection, she barely reciprocates. But for the sake of season 2, we pretend that the second scenario is true, and that Rhea simply doesn't show her love openly. I didn't think I'd make a second season, since I originally planned for Rikuto to die, and then Rhea would be left pining for him. But because she ended up with Psyche, it created an opportunity for another season. Season 2 was named Scarlet Chains, since the story didn't have anything to do with their demon wings anymore. Did it have anything to do with Scarlet Chains though? Probably not, I just thought it sounded cool. Overall, I was happier with the plot development in the second season, except for one part which I'll discuss in detail later. So the second season begins with Rhea and Sykes' wedding, which was crashed by Des, who escaped from the afterworld. Here's a fun fact. The prisoner number for Des, 140035, reads as I am Des in Leet speak, but with the M and D replaced with zeros since they didn't have single digit equivalents. Anyway, Des enters Sykes' body and controls them to kill most of the wedding attendees. Rhea manages to temporarily bring him back with the power of love and a good slap as well. Hmm. You know. This plot development actually sounds kind of familiar. It's strangely similar to the second season of another one of my series, no matter what. A villain's soul escapes from the afterworld, and then enters the male protagonist's body, and then causes chaos. Did I plagiarize myself? Anyway, Rei and Maya manage to get the situation under control. Well, somewhat. 
Ray alters some of the humans' memories and then creates an illusion, leading everyone to believe that a random murderer had crashed the wedding rather than Psyche. Back at home, Rhea asks Psyche if he knows what happened, but he's not sure himself. They're unable to discuss much more since Rhea is too tired to stay awake due to a lack of energy from her refusal to consume humans for sustenance. When Rhea wakes up, she sees that Psyche is absent. She goes to search for him and finds Asu instead. Asu begs Rhea for help and then leads her to his mother who is seemingly being attacked by Psyche. With the power of love, she manages to bring Psyche back to his senses again. Although Asu's mother is not injured, she falls into a coma from the shock. Since Rhea feels responsible, she offers to let Asu stay at their home. Back at home, Rhea is surprised to find Rikuto and Oreo in the living room. They give her a brief explanation of the cycle of life, death, and reincarnation for demons. They also tell her about Death, who has invaded Psyche's body and his plans to take over him. Though there is a way to immediately get rid of Death, they refuse to elaborate and simply say they're looking for a better solution. Despite their efforts to restrain Psyche along with Death, he escapes at night once again. Rhea uses clairvoyance to search for him and finds him in the demon realm, but is deflected by Death's power to cancel other demons' abilities before she can pinpoint his exact location. Everyone rushes to the demon realm to search for Death, and Rhea is the first one to find him. She sees him consuming another demon to increase his powers through Psyche's ability. Aggravated by Rhea's constant interruptions, Death attacks her but is stopped by Maya, who scares Psyche back to his senses. After so many incidents, Psyche becomes riddled with anxiety and refuses to sleep at night since he's scared of harming Rhea. Even though she attempts to comfort him, he remains uneasy. Psyche has a discussion with Rikuto and learns that Death could be forcefully removed from him with the power of pure light from an angel's realm. However, it is very likely that Psyche will be destroyed along with him since Death is in his body. To avoid such drastic measures, they have Ray curse Psyche to turn into a rabbit again. I never mentioned the removal of the rabbit spell in Season 1, but it seems reasonable enough so Psyche can actually be intimate with Rhea, right? Anyway, this time only Rhea can change him back to his regular form, and she only has to touch him with bare skin. With some clever tactics, they manage to prevent Des from doing anything the following night. However, in the morning, while Rhea is speaking to Psyche, Des takes over and decides to kill Rhea. He transports them to a different realm where they can fight without disturbance. A little fun fact. The scenery change happened only because it was easier to animate a fight scene in a different background. Anyway, Rhea loses easily, but before Death can finish her, she manages to touch him and turn Psyche back into a rabbit. Rhea is on the verge of death, but Rhea barely saves her life with healing magic. They leave her alone to recuperate, though she is visited by Asu shortly after. Asu tells Rhea that he really likes her, but not in a romantic sense. It's just because she reminds him of his mom. After such an adorable confession, Rhea tells Asu that she likes him too. Psyche, who was standing right outside the door, hears the confession for each other and leaves before clarifying the situation. Ah, the classic misunderstanding. Shortly after Asu leaves, Psyche comes in while dragging his clothes as a cute little bun bun. He picks Rhea on the cheek to transfer himself back and then expresses his insecurities to her. Rhea is unable to reassure him, and he ends up leaving. So, I know it seems like he left only because of Asu. That's my bad for emphasizing on it too much. The biggest factor that actually pushed Psyche to such drastic measures was the fact that he almost killed Rhea. He was so shocked by it that he was hesitant to even touch her when Rhea requested for his help in healing her. Asu's confession was just the final drop in the bucket and made him think that Rhea wouldn't have to be alone even if he disappeared. I had actually planned more scenes between Rhea and Asu before Psyche was finally driven over the edge, but I felt that it would only drag on the story. Though instead, I made the mistake of ending the story too abruptly and we'll get to that in a bit. So Psyche makes the decision to enter the angel's realm to destroy death at the risk of his own life. Although he is stopped by an angel guarding the gates, Psyche defeats him easily. 
Rhea arrives at the last moment and begs Psyche not to go, but Psyche can feel death taking over again, so he rushes into the pure light. And then... What happened? Like, no, seriously, what happened? I can't blame you guys for being confused. I made this myself, and I was confused. Apparently, my reason for doing this was just because I hated the dialogue that happened when Psyche was under pure light since it was so cheesy, so I simply removed it. What the hell is all I can say to myself? What was wrong with me? Why didn't I just remove the cheese? You guys were right to complain. I did you wrong. I'm complaining to my past self right now. Apparently, I added some annotations at that part to reduce confusion. So I went through the trouble of finding an extension to retrieve them since they're no longer supported by YouTube. But there was basically only one, and it was just a brief explanation. So just as it says, Psyche was cleansed by pure light which destroyed death, but he himself was spared because there was some good in him. One year later, Asu's mother wakes up from her coma. He goes home, and everyone else returns to the rightful places. Psyche makes the decision to reform the demons so they'll no longer be such a great threat to humans, and then Rhea kisses him. Finally! Since the beginning of Demonic Wings, it only took until the very last episode of the final season for Rhea to finally show some physical affection. Which is exactly why this kiss happened. Besides being a nice way to close the story, I realized that Rhea had never shown any physical affection with Psyche despite everything he had done for her. After that cute little scene in the credits roll, we see another time skip centuries into the future. Rikuto and Psyche have been reborn and they're best buds again. Now, I know it doesn't really make sense for them to all retain their names and look almost the same as they did before, but I want to minimize confusion. Even though Rikuto is still a demon, Psyche was reborn as a human instead after being cleansed by pure light. Similar to the beginning of the first season, Rhea bumps into Psyche and drops her glasses. She comments on Rikuto's wings, and then... the story begins again. But will it end the same way? Who knows? And with that, the main story finally concludes. I'll admit, a reason for the story ending this way was just so I wouldn't be tempted into making a third season. For the most part, I'm happier with Scarlet Chains than I am with Demonic Wings. Besides a couple of parts, mainly the lack of explanation after Psyche enters the Angel's Realm, I'm a lot more satisfied with the development in the second season. The characters felt more consistent, and there were less... things happening just for the sake of happening. I only released one extra story, but I actually wanted to make a lot more than that. I planned a long extra on Maya and how she met her husband, Riz, and I had actually made a portion of it a long time ago. I thought I'd render it and show it here, but it turns out I lost all the progress somehow. I know, I'm as disappointed as you are. Besides that one, I also wanted to make a few other shorter extras, like a story on the angel who appeared in the last episode of Scarlet Chains, a short on Maya and Jasmine attempting to cook for Rey, a romantic little scene between Rhea and Psyche at night, and perhaps more. It's a shame I never got to make them, but I have no intention of returning to Maple series again. Anyway, the only extra I released told a story on Rey and a human girl he met named Jasmine. At the beginning, we find out that Rey is actually in love with Maya romantically. He's been freeloading at her place to stay close to her, but storms out after Maya asks them for baby names. He can't stomach the idea of another man having a happy married life with her, but doesn't want her to discover his feelings, so he leaves to sulk by himself. Ray goes to a quiet and secluded place, but finds a girl in his usual spot. When he sees how terrified she is of him, he takes pity on her and doesn't chase her off. He quickly realizes that she's unable to speak, and so on a whim, he uses magic so she can communicate to him with her thoughts. While speaking to Jasmine, Ray compares her to his sister. Because of his demon ability, he can sense that Jasmine has a deep trauma, just like Maya once did. And because of that similarity, he opens up to her. After they chat for a while, Jasmine decides to return home, but expresses that she would like to see Ray again. He only gives her an ambiguous response, and then leaves as well. The next day, Ray offers to run some errands for Rhea just so he'll pass by the park where he met Jasmine. 
being a tinder that he is, Ray convinces himself that he's going to look for Jasmine just to relieve some boredom and not because he actually wants to see her. He finds Jasmine at the same bench, but she's deep asleep in a nightmare. Ray recalls how Maya also used to suffer from nightmares and then decides to peek in Jasmine's dream out of concern. His consciousness is transported into a dark forest where he sees a younger Jasmine being assaulted by an unknown man. Ray fits the pieces together and realizes that must be the source of her trauma. In a fit of rage, he kills the man in a dream and then embraces Jasmine. Although she was terrified at first, she ends up feeling strangely safe in his arms. She tells this to Ray when she wakes up, and though he doesn't say much about it, he can already sense her budding feelings for him. Jasmine then offers Ray some cookies that she made herself. Unfortunately, the taste of her cooking is just as bad as Maya's. When Jasmine decides to return home, Ray offers to walk with her because he's worried she might get assaulted again, though he doesn't say that. Jasmine asks him if he's concerned about her, and he vehemently denies it with blushing cheeks. Later at night, Jasmine is still on Ray's mind. He recalls her telling him that she has trouble sleeping at night, and he wonders if her trauma is the reason why. He tries to shut off his thoughts, but can't stop thinking about her. Eventually, he decides to go see her, though he convinces himself that he's going out just because he can't fall asleep. Just as he suspects, Jasmine is trembling on her bed instead of sleeping. He catches her attention by knocking on the window, and she comes over to speak with him. She then admits that she's afraid of the night, since it makes her remember unpleasant things. After hearing this, Ray decides to take Jasmine out on a little night excursion. He shows her the stars, as well as a display of magical lights to change her perception of the night into a positive one instead. From this point on, Ray and Jasmine start meeting regularly, sometimes in the day, and sometimes secretly at night. They fall for each other deeply, but one day, Jasmine suddenly tells Ray that they won't be meeting anymore. She leaves without elaborating, leaving Ray confused. He can sense that she feels sad about it, and he knows that she's been worried about something recently, but he never forced her to speak up. At night, once again, Ray is unable to get Jasmine out of his mind. He decides to disobey her request for him to not visit her, but is caught by Maya before he leaves. Maya has noticed that Ray seems to be worried, and wants to do something for him since he has always been there for her. Ray thanks her and tells Maya that he loves her, but as a sister now since he's finally moved on. After that, Ray leaves to find Jasmine and sees her already waiting for him by the window. Because of his demon ability, he knows for a fact that she wanted to see him and still loves him. Jasmine finally admits that she has to go study abroad, but didn't want to say goodbye to him because it's too sad and she wants to preserve all of her memories with him as happy ones. Ray calls her an idiot, and I agree. Please tell your boyfriend about important things like this. He then tells her that he'll wait for her and to look forward to the day they'll meet again. Although, if she takes too long, he'll go to her instead. Just as he's about to give her a goodnight kiss, they're interrupted by Jasmine's aunt. I'm sorry for doing this to you guys. In the morning, Ray goes to the airport to see Jasmine off. He kisses her on the cheek and tells her that he'll give her a real kiss when she comes back. When the time comes, he also hopes to hear her real voice. Shortly after Jasmine leaves, Ray notices that he apparently had a trio of stalkers following him. Maya comes out along with Rhea and Syke, and Maya admits that she was just worried about him. Much to Ray's embarrassment, they were around long enough to see his little romantic act. He chases them off, and then returns to longing for his beloved. After the credits roll, we see a little scene in the future where Ray and Jasmine meet again at the same place where they met for the first time. Jasmine finally calls out to him with her own voice, and Ray finally delivers the kiss he had promised her. And then the story ends there. Oh my god guys, I actually love this extra so much. I know not everyone enjoys pure romance stories, but I'm a diehard romance fan. This extra basically has all the romance that I'd never managed to fit into the main story, and it was developed so much better. Oh my gosh, I love this. They're adorable. I know it seems silly that I'm fangirling over my own story and characters, but oh my gosh. I made this because I love this kind of stuff, and I'm just so happy with how it turned out. So I know I just finished gushing about the extra story, but after looking through the entire series again to make this video... Wow, there are so many inconsistencies and plot points in the main series that I am unhappy with. 
I'm cringing so hard, guys. It hurts. Why did I make this? And why did you guys like it? What was wrong with us? Ah, teenage years. Despite what I just said, the story does hold a special place in my heart, just as it perhaps does for many of you. I'd actually really love to rewrite it someday, but I've yet to fulfill my promise on freezing in October Children. For those who don't know, I remade Freezing as a kinetic visual novel and renamed it to World of Phenomena. Unfortunately, it's on hiatus right now, and I'm not sure when I'll get back to it. I plan to write October Children as a light novel and post it on the web, and I might take the same path for Freezing or World of Phenomena if I end up discontinuing it as a visual novel. Whenever I finally get those two stories done, I'll probably consider rewriting Demonic Wings as a light novel as well. Anyway, that's pretty much all I had to say in this video. If you would like me to make something similar for my other series, just let me know in the comments. Also, feel free to check out my new channel if you're interested. You can find some original sprite animations there, as well as the first few chapters of World of Phenomena. I've been making drawn animations and other videos related to Genshin Impact lately, but I do plan to make other content in the future as well. Hope to see you guys there!